Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Okay, maybe that was a little over the top. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get our next video started. Welcome back. Welcome back. To We're here episode. again. <laughs> It's us again, guys. Yep. We're going to be here forever, like always. <laughs> <laughs> or almost forever, anyways. It seems like it, if we're in the galley, anyways. Right. Yep. So, um, anyways, continuing to our unending project. Yep. We are slowly moving forward from galley what? to main salon. Wow, did you hear that? Wow, we're starting to work our way out of the galley? Yep. No way. And then, your favorite removing more rotted teak panels oh yeah well you gotta be out with the old and in with the new right you gotta right. get rid of the rotted ones to put the new ones in so yeah we're having fun with all that right all right so stay tuned guys we're gonna show you this week videos update yeah so let's while. hey you know if we stop talking <laughs> we can start this video yep because somebody said one time what did they <laughs> say talking. yep that's what they said quit <laughs> show talking us. yeah show us don't tell us so we're gonna get going we'll right. see you guys here in a little, in bit. little bit all right see ya <laughs> okay here we go so one of the projects we want to tackle today is we need to get the frames for the large non-opening port lenses removed We've got to drill out the teak bungs for that. 
get those off, and then that'll give us access to be able to get the large teak panel off because it's rotted as well, and these these uh, non-opening ports are leaking like crazy. So we need to get access to get in there and see what's going on behind there. We imagine it's going to be more rotted wood and all that kind of good stuff going on there, but that's all right. We're also going to need to be able to drop the vinyl in that area as well because as with the rest of the overhead section in that, that part of the boat, there's going to be that plywood up overhead that's going to be rotted. We're going to need to remove that and use it as a template to take home and make a new one. In this picture here, you can see some of the uh, gap covers that are on the overhead vinyl. And these are just vinyl wrap pieces of small quarter inch thick plywood. And, uh, you know, earlier we talked about replacing these with teak. And I think that's the choice we've made. And until we get to see what it actually looks like, I think that's the direction we're going to go is going to replace these gap covers with uh, actual teak. All right, so the plan today was to get the frame out of here, which we did. Um, remove the rest of the trim holding the holding this panel in place. We have the overhead trim off here. And we're just about done pulling all the staples all the way forward so that we can pull this back the rest of the way. Uh, we already have it pulled back here. <clears throat> we still need to get this, still need to get this uh, trim off of here, which I already have the bungs already drilled out and ready. I just need to uh, drill them out with the big drill bit and pop them out and then get the fasteners out that are holding that on. I like to get this piece of uh, plywood out of here today, but we'll see. If not, I uh, already got the back section out right there. And then we still need to, uh, we need to clean it and paint it and everything up underneath there, but I don't think we'll get to that today. And then um, <clears throat> we want to get this panel off of here today if we can. That would be really nice. And then the other plan is to get this port light out and this port light out today and then remove this, remove this panel and the forward panel. If we can get both of those out today, bring them home, make new ones during the week, and then have them ready to come back uh, into next week. And then we still need to paint up here and then replace, reinstall the new plywood that goes along here. But I don't know if we're going to get to that today, so we'll see. Not a big deal if we don't. We're, getting, we're making some good progress. If we get to the bonus round today, then maybe we can mount the port light that goes here, have one rebuilt ready to go back, and uh, that'd be a big bonus. Sprayed some uh, foam insulation in here, so to fill up that cavity. So we'll see how that works out. If that's if that works out really good, we're going to do that all all the way throughout. So we'll see how it goes. Anyways, that's where we're at for today. So uh, let's see where we get to. Later. Bye. Okay, so we got the next overhead section of plywood removed and it's, you can tell it's been getting wet for a long time and it's delaminated as well. So we'll take this home and use it as a template to make a new one. We actually had to tape it together to get it to hold its form so it wouldn't just totally, totally flake apart and turn into just little squares of old wood. Anyways, uh, we'll make a new one and we'll epoxy coat them like we've been doing on all the others. It's not a big deal. And we also got the rest of the staples that were holding the vinyl in place. We got all those removed and now we have the vinyl pulled back and taped back to hold it out of the way so we can remove the next forward section of plywood. It's not as bad as the piece we just removed, but it's still gonna be rotted in sections and water, water uh, saturated as well. So we'll pull it out and we'll take it home and use it as a template to make another new one. So now with the vinyl pulled back and the uh, overhead section of wet delaminated plywood removed you can see it's pretty easy now straightforward next thing we got to do is get the port lights out so we can get that teak plywood off the side wall there and see what's going on behind there with those large non-opening ports we got to see what's happening behind there so we're not sure how these come apart so i imagine that we got to take this retainer ring off on the outside and maybe that will allow the lens to come out outboard or inboard i'm not sure but we pulled that off first and you can see that it's got our friend 5200 behind there and you can see that it's been leaking through the past the seal which no big surprise there to get the stainless steel trim ring off you got to be careful because it's thin and if we pry up on it we start to bend it and mutilate it and deform it and then we're gonna have to straighten that back out when we put it back down 
because it's going to look bad. And yes, we're showing more port lights again. Keep in mind, we have like 15 or 16 of these on the boat to, to remove and replace, rebuild, and blah, 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 right? But uh, I know some of you are tired of seeing them and have commented on it in the, the comments. But we're showing this still because it's part of the flow of the repair process. We don't want to skip over it because we're trying to show the scope of all the damage we've encountered along the way. And so we're not trying to gloss over this or anything. So we're not going to go into real in-depth on it. But as you can see, we're removing and going to be replacing more port lights. Okay, so here's what it looks like. We have the, teak, the large teak panel removed now. And here's what was holding in those large uh, fixed port lenses is looks like plywood so and it's not protected it's not epoxy coated or anything like this so it was doomed to fail from the very beginning when it was built new at the factory um, all the windows on a boat leak they all have condensation they'll have moisture having plywood as your main frame to hold these in place considering that all the moisture is going to be around there not a good idea and if you're going to do it make sure it's epoxy coated or wrapped in fiberglass or something so it doesn't lose its integrity over time but this is what we're dealing with so now we got to figure out how to get these removed so this is our homework assignment this is the stuff we'll be taking home when we leave the boat later uh, we have looks like a couple more teak panels we need to use uh, as templates to make some new ones we have some uh, window frames that we need to sand and revarnish, and a couple overhead pieces of plywood that we need to make and a couple more port lights that we had removed that we're going to take home and rebuild make new lenses for put new seals in etc have those ready to go back for installation at a later date but yeah so we always bring stuff home when we can and i try to work on it during the week helps kind of keep the progress of the project moving forward here you can see we had lots of holes to fill with thick and epoxy on this port light cutout and uh, every one of the holes was stripped out i don't know how the port light was actually held in other than the 5200 holding it but anyways, we took care of that. And we also learned our lesson on uh, spraying the expanding foam insulation um, behind the plywood panels, the teak plywood panels where the port lights mount because all I did was spread those apart farther and uh, there was no way I was getting the port light mounted in there. So I had to end up carving all that out. So anyways, lesson learned there. Um, don't put it everywhere. I'm trying to learn that there are places this stuff does not belong and that was probably one of them. So a little fun, a little humor, but anyways, we learned our lesson on that. All right, so we got that port light out and epoxy the holes. Got this port light out and opened and epoxied the holes and taped it off. Same thing back here. Clean that one up and open the holes, epoxy them. And this one's ready also. So we have several ready for mounting. So like we said before, we're gonna to continue to show a little bit about the port lights as we go, just so you guys are aware of the scope of work that we're working on. We're not gonna go into a lot of detail about them, but just right here you can see that we have several that we've removed and in various stages of being ready to reinstall the new ones once we're finished rebuilding them. We will in the future do a complete video on one port light and we'll do a start to finish rebuild of what we did to make the lenses and replace the seals and all that stuff just in case somebody has these style of port lights and you're wondering how to do it we can show you how we did it and uh, we'll do that at a later date on various different projects you'll see us using tape to tape off something we've removed or to identify something or just to hold something together or whatever but we have found so far this uh, scotch 3m blue tape has worked the best this is a painters type tape and it works really good you can pull it off and remove it and it doesn't usually leave any residue behind and uh, so far we're really happy with it so you'll see it all over the place and we like to use it especially when we have a port light removed and it keeps the rain out but it's not weather friendly for very long so we do have to keep an eye on that on how long we're going to keep it on something on the outside all right so here we are we got the panel down um, we got the wood window frames off here and uh, just so you can see these are going to be really fun because uh, I'm going to have to remake this wood frame here and I'm going to have to make it for both of them and I might as well make a set for the other side too because uh, we are going to have the same problems over there so 
I have to get some material to make a pattern off of this before I take these down because they're going to come down in pieces and I won't have a good pattern off of it. So I'm going to have to bring something next time we come to the boat and we'll make some patterns off of it. But was able to get the uh, the panel off that was, you know, been water damaged and all that. So we got that off. Um, we got this panel off here also. And the this port light's removed. And we have this port light removed as well. And you can see the epoxy dripping down. That's from the outside. I filled the holes uh, from the outside with thickened epoxy. And then uh, next time we come back, we'll grind this off and open the holes on the inside and fill those up with thickened epoxy as well. And we'll clean this up, paint it, and same thing up there. Same as what we've done back there. And we'll get this ready for, we'll get it ready for uh, mounting the next panel. We'll make the teak panels at home and we'll get everything ready for next time. So anyways, uh, I feel like I got a lot done, but wasn't as much as I wanted, but still, not bad. Anyways, we're making good progress. So, take a look down here because next time we look, it should be all clean and painted white. And hopefully we'll have some insulation on the walls and ready to put some panels on soon. So, anyways, those are the next steps. Where we get, I don't know, but that's what we're going to be planning for. So, anyways, that's where we're at. See so now that the long teak panels have been removed, uh, we'll take those. We're gonna take those home and make new ones. We'll use them as templates. But now we have this blank wall here, the fiberglass side wall of the cabin top that's bare and rough looking. And what I've what I've found the best way to clean this up really quick is a wire wheel on a drill motor at high speed cleans it off really quick. A real light touch, not pressing too hard, not enough to make any heat or any kind of grinding away of the fiberglass material, but just a real quick pass, and it takes off all the rough high stuff. Then we can sand it with a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper by hand or even a, a hand sander. And then once that's clean, we wipe it down with acetone and we're ready to uh, apply our first coat of paint. And we like to use that white bilge coat paint. That stuff's working really good for these types of applications. Put one or two coats of that on there and it's pretty durable and it'll keep that surface nice and clean for a long time. And then we can also adhere that uh, high density black foam insulation down to it and it'll stick really good. So now we're going to transition into making a new panel for one of the teak panels we took off. And uh, they, we're going to make it out of new teak plywood that's quarter inch thick. Sometimes this teak plywood comes double sided. So you want to pick the side that you want to show that you're facing side. And make sure that everything's clamped up accordingly so that's going to be your front side when everything's all cut out. But uh, anyways we need to cut, we need to uh, clamp this down nice and tight so it's nice and flat all the way around. And we're going to use a uh, flush cutting router bit to cut this out once it's all ready to go. One of the things you'll notice about this piece of plywood uh, was broken and it came off in a couple pieces so we had to carefully line this back up and so I used my uh, black sharpie pen to make several index lines on there so I knew how to line everything back up and then a little bit of it was a little bit of guesswork in the end but we'll see if we get lucky or not but it's important to have everything line up really nice because that's where we're going to use to locate all of our new holes so we don't have to drill any new holes into the structure of the boat to mount these back up but if everything goes well it's going to be a perfect fit then once we have everything all clamped up and ready to start using the router we flip it all over so it's upside down because the following wheel on the cutting bit is going to be actually at the bottom. So it's kind of hard, but a little bit flying blind here, but we've done it a few times now and it turns out really good. So usually what we'll do is we'll do a rough cut with the jigsaw just to kind of cut it out. So we only have really only about a quarter inch of extra edge margin all the way around. Otherwise, if you leave too much edge margin, the router bit kind of gets bogged down and it gets really hot because it's cutting on, on more than one side of the bit. You know, um, so it's instead of trying to cut through a deep section of plywood, you're only really trimming the face off of the edge, which makes it a lot easier and quicker to pass through. But yeah, it's a little tricky to get the hang of it, but after you've done it a few times, these, these start to get a little bit easier for us. All right, so now that we have our new piece of teak plywood cut out, it's time to go around and locate all the holes with a small pilot hole drill bit. So we get those all located, and it's also time to start cutting out the uh, port light cutouts. 
keep in mind we're just using an exact following cut cut out of the one that was in the old teak plywood so yeah it's a little jagged and a little squirrely looking but we found that we're not going to fight it we're just going to cut out what was already there and it's worked so far and nobody's going to see it once we put the new port light in there the extra frame edge and everything hides all that but it looks a little shoddy and sloppy if you ask me one of our favorite things to do is to put the first coating of varnish on after we've made one of these new panels it just gives us a real sense of satisfaction and it shows the true beauty of the wood that we're actually working with that teak it looks so nice with the layer of varnish on it okay so up next is to cut out the very long forward section with the non-opening ports and uh, this one's gonna be a little bit tricky because the uh, cutouts for the ports uh, port lenses are a little bit different looking they're a little angled but we'll get it and now you see the tool we're using here is the uh, router and it's got the following cutting bit on it and if you look at the bit you'll notice the following wheel is at the bottom it's good to note that because that wheel is out of sight when you're cutting these and if you have any imperfections on the edge of your wood that you're following that router is going to follow that and it's going to cut that exact same imperfection into your new piece of plywood ask me how i know i have lots of answers and lots of stories i can already tell you we've made lots of mistakes fall using that wheel to follow right into the cracks cuts voids whatever it is it'll find them and then it cuts it so it's good to kind of look over your piece before you start cutting so once everything was properly clamped down and we were ready to go we flipped it upside down and we started cutting and it turned out pretty good and we did the same thing we always do is we rough cut it with the jigsaw so we don't have a lot of edge margin to have to trim away with the router and that'll save the router bit and it saves a lot of time and it just makes things a lot easier so anyways we got that cut out and now we're looking pretty good this turned out all right so again one of the next steps we want to do once we have it cut out is we want to start making all of our new pilot holes so that everything has the holes in it so it bolts it screws right in where the old one came out we don't have to make new holes we don't have to find any holes or locate any holes it saves a lot of time and it just you know prevents us from putting more more holes in the boat and then uh, once we have everything done located then it's time to cut out the uh, cutouts for the new lenses that are going to go in there so there you go it looks pretty good we have almost an exact replica of what came out minus the fi the finished coat of the varnish and all that sort of stuff but yeah this is a pretty easy process once you once you learn how to do it and get comfortable using the router it doesn't it doesn't take a lot of time and so there it is the old and the new side by side and we, let's see the, the old window frames the uh, wooden frames fit right in there nicely so that's a good thing and uh, the cutouts turned out good and we got all of our holes and everything located so we're ready to go with this and the next step's going to be a little light sanding and get it ready for varnish and see what it looks like then so again look at how beautiful that looks with just one coat of varnish on it man what a thing of beauty we're really excited to get these installed in the boat and just be able to sit back and look at them and admire some of the work we've done up to this point. I mean, if you think about what the boat looked like when we purchased it and look at how the quality of the work we're putting into it, hopefully it pays off in the end, and I'm sure it will. But Baby and I really like this color, the varnish. It's going to look really good on, on the interior of the boat when we have all the new pieces in there. Now it's time to turn our attention to these little window frames here and get these sanded up. And so we don't want to take a lot of material off of these because we don't want them to get thin or anything like that. But we do want to clean out the, as many of the water stains in the old areas where the old varnish and things like that were on there. And we'll get these as clean as we can so they're not all stained and they'll look good. So next it was time to put our first coat of varnish on these uh, lens frames. And they turned out all right. Like I said, when we sanded them, we did the best we could to get them as cleaned up and nice as we could. But... They have some issues and some blemishes on them, but we're not going to be able to get all that out of there without taking away too much material. So a lot of it's not going to be seen anyways, but it's the best we can make it for the time being. And um, anyways, they turned out really nice. So one of the last things we wanted to get finished with was a sidewall here. And so we wanted to re really get our first coat of paint on there. We had a couple of small holes that we wanted to fill with uh, thickened epoxy. And some of those were just extra screw holes that were in there from who knows what. But we're not going to be using them and we don't want to leave them open. So we went ahead and opened them up a little bit and then put some thickened epoxy in there. And uh, got our first coat of the bilge coat paint on there. And now it'll be ready for one more coat of paint. And then after that we'll be able to start putting our 
thin layer of uh, high density foam insulation on there. Pretty soon we'll be able to start working on closing this area up. Well, as you can see, we started removing this rotted wood frame here. And this frame is the only thing that holds the uh, port lenses in here, right? And so could you imagine if it got hit by a strong wave or something from the outside with this wood holding it in? The wood's not even reinforced with fiberglass or epoxy or anything like that. I think a wave would knock that in pretty easily, but regardless, we were able to go ahead and get a thin layer of this wood scraped off of here and kept it into one piece fairly well with, with the help of some tape. And uh, yeah, now we're stuck with the task of trying to figure out what to do with the rest of this. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and remove these window frames here. They're made out of wood and they're just completely rotted. And uh, so these windows have been leaking for a really long time. You know, adding to all the fun water damage and wood rot and everything else. But so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something better. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and remove these and then we'll remove the, the uh, uh, plexiglass lens and use that as a template to make new ones but when we go ahead and put this back together we're going to we're going to try and do something a little bit different than all this but anyways i don't know this was uh 1990s technology i guess i sure thought they had better things to use back then but anyway so we'll probably end up doing um We'll probably end up doing a wood frame, but I think we're going to go ahead and coat it with epoxy and we'll probably also uh, wrap it in fiberglass so that when we install it, it's not just, um, you know, coming apart like this. So, yeah, we're just, you know, pulling pieces of this out of there and all kinds of stuff. So, uh... I was able to get one of the layers to come off, and so we're going to use that as a template to make the new one, but anyways, that's where we're at. Lucky for us, we were able to get one thin layer of that plywood off of that window frame, or the lens frame, and we'll take that and we're going to use that as a template to hopefully make four of these, um, two for this side and two for the other side, and then uh, we'll treat those with a lot of penetrating epoxy and make sure they're saturated really well so they'll never rot. So now with all the uh, rotted wood framing removed from the uh, port lens area, now we have this stuff, uh, I'm not sure if it's Bondo, thick and epoxy, or a combination thereof, or whatever it is, it was good stuff. It's just too bad they didn't prep the rest of the wood the same way, and uh, we wouldn't be doing this right now. Uh, what a pain it was to get this big epoxy mess that was on here. You can still see quite a bit of it, and right here it's still really thick. The epoxy and uh, I guess I use that to compensate for the thinness here of the fiberglass I don't know why the fiberglass tapered down to thinner structure here but back here you can still see the fiberglass is is uh, definitely thicker here than it is right here so and then right here it's even really thin the fiberglass is so we're gonna we're gonna work with that and make it uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do better than that so we'll, we'll end up grinding this all the way back down to, down to clean fiberglass and get rid of all the, uh, all this epoxy that's on here. We'll get rid of all that, get it back down to good clean fiberglass and then we'll, I'll thicken the fiberglass up in some of these areas just to, you know, just to beef it up a little bit. Uh, this is how it was from the factory so obviously it was good enough but I think we can make it a little bit better. Uh, this, 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 uh, this has been leaking for a really long time. Um, all the wood down in here is just, it's just rotted. So we're gonna be fixing that while we're here, but uh, nothing major. Just uh, interesting that this has been filling up with water and, and just rotting the wood. So we're gonna fix it. It's gonna be better than it was. And uh, yeah, no, nothing that we can't handle, but just sad that uh, there was so much seal and stuff, just junk just injected in here you know because they were chasing a leak obviously several times and they just figured they'd fix it with just jamming more seal and silicone in there and uh, yeah it probably worked for a little while but then when the hull flexed and the seasons heat and, and cooled it down it probably contracted and started leaking again so 
we'll do better. I have I have some good ideas for what we're gonna do here, but uh, you can see they just were were quite happy with that uh, by, uh, the uh, plywood framing there. So that's from the factory. That's how they did it. So it must have been you know really good. Safe for all those uh, waves that are crashing on deck. Everybody's always wor warning me about. Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna make it better. There you go. So after lots of grinding and chiseling and hammering away, we got this surface pretty well prepped. I think we still need to do a little bit of final sanding and, and just leveling it out a little bit better, but it's just about there. We'll get it prepped and then we'll move on to the next one. Eventually we'll get there, one step at a time. All right, so um, here we are again, guys. We're hey, back. that's a nice hat. Oh yeah, Where'd that's right. Get... Where did you get the hat? Uh, to one of our... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, one of our patrons. Brandon again. Did Brandon no. get us hats? <laughs> anyways... It, uh, Brandon's our only patron. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, here we so, go. So, <laughs> um, anyways, whoever... or Just to ask guys if you want to have some hats, we're gonna get yeah. it for free. Yeah. Well, we're not, we're gonna... hang, on. <laughs> hang on a second. We're a low budget operation here. We're, we, wanna, we can't be doing the freeze. <laughs> if you're no, we're just we're just gonna give it to our long time <laughs> subscribers. subscribers. Yeah, we're just like one or two, so we can afford that. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're having so much fun yeah, here. Let's, let's talk quit talking. <laughs> Before we spend some money. <laughs> yep. Anyways, um Yeah, are so we right now? Okay. we're trying to so, remove large port port light lenses. Oh yeah, those are <laughs> such a struggle, man. So yeah, we struggled on those in this episode and uh as you can see those did not come out easy. Um they came out in thousands, if not millions of pieces and shattering and oh my gosh, I can't imagine how they built this boat when it was new, but uh they it seemed like they used whatever means necessary and it wasn't always the best way to go but we got them out we got those rotted frames out for the uh, port lenses and um yeah we're just gonna figure out how that go how that all goes together at some point but right now we're just demolishing and taking them out and getting that uh old rotted junk out of there so plus uh you know we're gonna remove more port lights as we continue to do so here the boat has like a total of 15 of the opening port lights and uh, so we're working our way through those as you saw we took out some more so we'll bring those home and rebuild them but yeah so we got a lot done in this episode as well so we're just continuing to move our way through all these projects and knocking them down one at a time it seems like it takes forever but we're getting there yep so and we enjoy doing it oh yeah it's fun the boat's liking it yeah the boat likes it boat feels like it's being loved and cared for and uh we're learning our way through this. You can tell once we figure out the repair we're going to do, we start making some progress. But sometimes it takes a lot. <laughs> Why <Wait, wait>, bounce? <laughs> okay, so, let's do it like this. <laughs> yeah, all, right. all right, here we go. Now we don't have that problem. So go a little more clearance here on the clearance. All right. But anyways, anyways yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Yep, we appreciate it. Thanks. And if you made it this far into the video, we hope we made you smile or laugh a little bit. So. Yep, and then let us know if you want our hats, too. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> so. See you. If you're not subscribed yet, please, please subscribe, subscribe down, down below. below. Clean. See you. Yep, see you. We really Bye. appreciate you for watching. and. Please comment down below on what you if think. If you want hats. <laughs> and if you like the video. And uh, also, please don't forget to subscribe and comment. And let us know where you're from. Are you watching us from Australia? Philippines. New Zealand? Philippines, come on. We need more from the Philippines. Represent. All right. Anyways, you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time. Now there's a nice looking shell. I'd keep that one. And what's that? My idea. Oh, we got a boat coming. It's this guy. Nice. Dang. Five engines on the back. That was sweet. <laughs>